based on the consumption model. How can I make more money? What is my return on investment? How can I create capital base? Everything is economics, old economics, designed by somebody who has taught us that this is what the economics is all about. So when all of these things change, I believe there will be new physics, there will be new economics, there will be new math. I don't know what that is. But all of the stuff that we have been taught for the last 50 years is all based on that model of dominance of dollar. <clears throat> what does it mean to all of us? <clears throat> I hope this makes sense. I'm just saying it. I've not thought about it too much. Okay, but I thought it would be interesting to share with you all. Okay. Because this is where a lot of brain power is. And I hope it will trigger something somewhere here and maybe we'll get a little more clarity. Okay. We also talked about education. And I said, look, somebody somewhere decided that it should take four years to get a degree. And the whole world follows. I don't know why it takes four years to get a degree in China, India, Brazil, US, and England. But it does. When we think of education today, we automatically think of duster, blackboard, chalk, teacher, textbook, exam, grades, certificate. This is not how the world works anymore. I have a six-year-old niece, my sister's daughter's daughter in Ohio. And she was visiting me a few months ago. And she said she has just written a white paper on lady doctor, six-year-old. I thought she could barely read. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I go to all my doctors and dentists and they are all male. So I asked my mom once, mom, how come all of these guys are male doctors? And she said, I don't know. So this little girl decided to Google. And found that there was a lady doctor called Elizabeth, who was the first lady doctor in America. So she started digging. And then finally she wrote a white paper. When that little kid goes to school at the age of six, teacher is going to start with A, B, C, D. Because the teacher learned 40 years ago, and he, his or her version is, this is how you learn. And this little kid is going to probably tell her, are you crazy? I'm not interested in you. You're insulting me. That's the world we have designed. So the education has to change. The model in which teacher delivers content and creates content is obsolete. Teacher does not need to spend a lot of time in creating content. I had a teacher at MS University, Baroda, who used to say, my notes have not changed for 20 years. <laughs> <coughs> and he used to take great pride in it. So teacher will not have to create content all the time. Little bit of modification possible, 5-10%. Teacher does not need to deliver content. Content can be delivered in five different ways. So the role of the teacher will change to that of a mentor. What does it mean to student-teacher ratio? What does it mean to the cost structure? I believe the university of 2050 is going to be very different from the university that we are trying to build today. In India, we have a plan to build 14 universities, innovations universities. We want all these 14 universities to have different idea of university. We want to experiment with variety of university concepts. If you go back in the history, we were the pioneers in university. Nalanda, Taksasila were the only universities 2,700 years ago or whatever it was. I visited Taksasila. I have not visited Nalanda yet. We are rebuilding Nalanda as you know. India has always focused on promoting knowledge. Buddhas of the world traveled all over the world. India never had territorial ambitions. We are known to just go off and promote knowledge. 
something happened in between. Our model changed and the Western model came in. I believe it is time for us to redefine the model of university. It may take 50 years, may take 100 years, I don't know. So we are thinking of experimenting with these 14 universities to have 14, 17, whatever different models to see if we can come up with a new way of defining universities. I also believe that we are the only one in the world today who could focus on the bottom of the pyramid to look at science very differently. US is not going to do it. Europe is not going to do it because they have no need to do it. We need to look at bottom of the pyramid and all of the issues related to education, health, research, water, sanitation, whatever it is. We can't take the same paradigm and hope it will serve 400 million at the bottom of the pyramid. And this is exactly what we did in CDOT. We took the most advanced store program control machine with microprocessor control, C++, and all of that, and we said we're going to use this for a little small exchange, 256 line, which will be tied to water buffalo perhaps, may have lizard in it, but it must work without air conditioning. Because we had a need, which was very different. So our definition of science will have to change. It cannot really meet the definition of science of the Western world. Because our problems that we need to solve are very different. So here is an opportunity for India to redefine the model of education, which is more accessible, cheaper, sustainable, and scalable. Because we need to look at 550 million below age of 25. We need to provide education to 20 million new kids every year, year after year. Nobody has this scale. They don't get it. You know, you go to some of these countries and say, that we have 20,000 students or 50,000, 200,000 students. They think it is massive. Our needs are different in terms of order of magnitude. So we have an opportunity here to redefine education, methodology, learning methods, structures, but it's going to be tough because to change mindset in this country is impossible. You can't even get a freedom to hire the right vice chancellor because chief minister is going to decide his own little favorite person will get in. And we are talking about all kinds of these crazy wild ideas. But we have to dream. And we have to dream big and dream wild. And we probably get punished for dreaming this wild. And that's the romance of dreaming wild. We also have to look at science very differently. We can't solve the same physics problem that they are trying to solve. We can't solve the same problem except in health there is a lot of commonality. Because at the end of the day we are all human beings. But in many other areas problems are very different. They are localized. And I think we have huge advantage in large talent pool. Young talent pool. And we can afford to throw in a lot many more bodies at a problem comparatively than anybody else can. This is the real challenge in science and education in India. It is not about building more universities of the same kind. It is not about doing research of the same kind. It is about doing new research of the new kind. It is about building new institutions for education of the new kind for the next generation. We need many more people. They are there. We need to identify them. We need to garland them. We need to trust them. We need to turn them loose to go wild. And we need to back them up. And we need to celebrate their failures. Then only, I think, we will see tide turning in different direction. When I talk like this, people sort of react, saying this guy is crazy, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and then I know I am on track. 